Hello. Hi, Christian. Good evening. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm uh, so tired. You, you, you had to work today? Yes, yeah, I work hard. Oh, that's good. That's good. The week's almost over. Almost over. Ya estamos en la mitad de la semana. Middle of the week. And our class is finished tomorrow. Ya van a poder descansar un poquito más. Yes. And the the other the other the beginning for a start on yeah. um, Oh, we don't have a specific date yet. Uh but they do start in January. No hay una fecha específica definitiva yet. But they do start in January. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. But you will receive an email notifying you of that, as usual. Ah, uh, okay, okay, thank you. Of course. All right, and I also see that Nubia just joined and Rita just joined. Hello, good evening, girl. Hello, good evening, Sandra. How are you? this evening how are you doing today excellent i'm glad to hear that and i see rocio just joined i'm glad to hear from you thank you so much for joining today we are just going to wait for a couple of minutes more to see how many people can join today so that we can continue with our class. Uh, today is actually maybe our last class. Ya el día de mañana solo estaríamos haciendo más practice and um, doing the review of the final exam, right? Ya ahorita todos deberíamos estar casi, casi, casi terminando nuestra plataforma ya solo pendientes de nuestro final exam. Y ya tener todo, todo finalizado by tomorrow guys remember that it is super super important that we finish the platform para que podamos estar exitosamente preinscritos para nuestro siguiente module right and that we pass the platform with an 80 percent passing score right let's see so this is a very happy day because we are almost done. Guys. Almost, almost, almost done. Ya casi, casi, casi terminamos. We just have today and tomorrow. Y ya mañana se acaban nuestras clases de este module. And you'll be graduating for, um, from uh, beginners three or principiantes three. And you will move on to in, uh, pre-intermediate, which is so exciting. You will learn so many interesting things, guys. And let's see. We are right now eight people. Christian, Jennifer, Marlene, Nubia, Rita, Rocio, and Sergio. All right, guys. So, si se recuerdan, el día de ayer estuvimos trabajando en grupos en unos exercise, bueno, en un exercise. Uh, which was this one. Déjenme ponérselos por aquí. How are you guys? How are you guys today? Let's see. No, it's not this one. This one. We were finding the mistakes. ¿Dónde está? This one. ¿Se recuerdan? Were you able to work on this exercise? ¿Pudieron trabajar con este exercise? Yes, teacher. Awesome, cool. Excellent. So today, let me zoom it. Déjeme zoom in para que podamos verlo mejor. All right. 
today y mientras esperamos a ver si nos pueden unir más personas to this class, what we are going to do is we are going to review this exercise. Vamos a ver por qué son las razones en que estaba el error, a dónde estaba el error o los errores. Podía haber más de un error en cada oración. So, let's go ahead and review that exercise, guys. Because today, el día de hoy, también vamos a estar reviewing other exercises about the past. Pero esta vez, dependiendo de cuántos estemos, los vamos a hacer en grupos o los vamos a hacer todos juntos, right? Also, we are going to finish with the contents of the platform, which are school days, it's vocabulary, and also we're going to be doing a reading exercise, right? Esto sí lo vamos a hacer todos juntos. So before we move on to that, Vamos a hacer el review de estos exercises. Ok. So. Give me just one second. Déjenme ver algo aquí. Ok, perfect. Ok, cool, cool, cool. Perfect. Ok, so we are nine people right now. And we are going to start reviewing our exercise. El ejercicio que estábamos viendo ayer. There we go. Okay, perfect. We are nine people. We have Christian, Ale, Jennifer, Marlene, Nubia, Rita, Rocio, and Sergio. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and review this exercise. Vamos a ir en orden, as usual, haciendo o resolviendo un exercise cada uno, que acabemos estos exercises, all right? So, vamos a comenzar con leer el example. The example says, they, um, they eat dinner at six o'clock yesterday. ¿Cuál sería el error? Eight, porque they, they ate yesterday. Ellos no pueden comer ayer. Right? O sea, en español sí, pero no pueden comer ayer, sino que comieron ayer. In the past. So they ate dinner at 6 o'clock yesterday. Right? Eso es lo que debíamos hacer. Find the mistake and correct it. Entonces vamos a verlo en orden. Let's start with Christian. Number two. Eh, did Maria drive to work this morning? That is correct. Excellent. El error es el verbo. Is drove. That is correct. Y tendría que ser? Drive. Perfect. Tendría que ser drive porque ya usamos did, right? Excellent, Cristian. Now, let's see number three, Ali. Hola. Hola. Eh, en esa no encuentro ningún error. error. Mm, recordemos, bueno, Ay. this one, de esta uh -huh. de hecho tiene dos errores. Uh -huh. <ríe> ¿Alguien sabe cuáles son los dos errores? No te ¿Cómo, cómo? Sería finish. Not y finish it. Lo correcto sería, I didn't, I didn't finish. I didn't finish. Oh, okay. Correct. Excellent. Están en todo lo correcto. Siempre que estamos en el pasado, debemos usar did o didn't, right? Bueno, si es negativa, siempre debemos usar didn't. Entonces, no podemos solo usar not, sino que debemos usar did not. Y como ya usamos did, entonces debemos de colocar el siguiente verbo en infinitivo, which would be I didn't finish. Excellent, guys. My homework last night. Perfect. No problem. Vamos con el siguiente. Let's do number four, Jennifer. Mm, 
Mm. Where? Sería, where you busy last Monday? That is correct. Excellent. Where you busy last Monday? En lugar de did. Porque uno está, right, <laughs> ocupado. Uno no tiene ocupado o no hace ocupado, sino que uno está ocupado. So, where are you? Estabas ocupado? Excellent. Let's do the next one. Let's see number five. Novia. No sé si estoy en lo correcto, pero sería why was she buy, she buy a new car yesterday? Como, como? Why was she buy a new car yesterday? Sí. ¿Y cuál sería el error en la oración? Además de agregar why. ¿Cuál sería el mistake en esta oración, Kat? Mm. Mm. Sí, sí. Ajá, y en lugar what? de was, ¿qué tendría que ser? Sería did. Did she? That is correct. Did she did. buy a new car yesterday? Excellent. ¿Por qué es did? Porque buy es un verbo, right? Uno compra, hace la compra de un carro. So, Remember, guys, si estamos hablando de ad adjectives, siempre vamos a usar was o where, porque you are busy or you were busy. You are pretty or you were pretty. You are sad or you were sad, right? Como en el ejemplo de um, where you busy last month. En cambio, con el resto de los... Eh, Verbos como buy, um, eat, etc. Did you eat? Did you cook? Etc. Con verbs, si sí vamos a usar did, did, o didn't. Excellent. So aquí tendríamos que decir, did she buy a new car yesterday? Perfect. Vamos a poner esta rule por aquí. Okay, and let's review the next one. Let's do number six, Rita. I don't know, Alejandra. Okay, let's try to figure it out. Intentémoslo. Where? Y donde iría where or why? Veamos la oración. Tenemos, I wanted to went to Montreal two years ago. Una de las reglas es que si ya conjugamos un verbo, el otro ya no lo conjugamos, sino que va en infinitivo. Entonces, Sería go sería? en lugar de went. That is correct. Yes. I wanted to go. ¿Por qué? Porque ya conjugamos wanted, right? I wanted to go. Excellent. Recordemos esa regla. La vamos a poner por aquí también. Once you time a verb, the following verb, the following verbs go in the present or in infinitive form. Right. Vamos a poner este, esta rule por aquí. So, como ya conjugamos want, que es wanted, I wanted to go. Excellent. Veamos la siguiente. Let's review the next one, Sergio. Hello. 
lain. Hello. Hello. Hello, OC, OC. Hi, Sergio. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, were you late for the meeting? Yes, excellent. That is correct. Usamos where porque estamos con pronoun you. Excellent. Where? You late for the meeting? Perfect. Vamos a comenzar de nuevo. Uh, no. Let's see here. Let's review number eight. Marlene. Uh, who, who did you talk to? That is correct. Who did you talk to? No usamos talked porque ya conjugamos con did, right? So who did you talk to? Excellent. And let's review number nine. Vamos a comenzar de nuevo with Christian. Okay, okay, okay. Where were you staying in Washington? Mm, is stay an adjective? Where, where is a verb? Is a verb? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. is where? Remember, con los verbs oh, estamos. Okay. Yeah. Where did you, where did you stay in Washington? Yes, excellent. That is correct. When los verbs usamos did or didn't. Entonces, where did you stay? Excellent. All right, guys. Continuemos with number 10. Vamos a clear here. And let's continue with number 10. Let's review number 10, Ale. Um, I did read mm -hmm. that okay. book last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, en esto tenemos dos opciones. That is one of them. Excelente. Eso estaría muy bien. I did read that book yesterday. Como afirmando, right? Yo sí lo leí. I did read that book yesterday. Esa sería una muy buena opción. Excellent, Ale. Y la otra que tenemos es, podemos solo quitar el was y podemos decir como el verbo en pasado de read es read, se escribe igual. Podríamos solo decir, I read that book last year. Excellent. Ambas opciones son correctas. Now, let's review number 11, Jennifer. El verbo está mal conjugado, sería flu. John flew to Argentina last week. Correct. Excellent, Jennifer. The past tense of the verb fly, it's an irregular verb, so that means that the past tense is flu. Not flight, so not food. Now let's review number 12, Nubia. He wasn't at home last night. That is correct. He wasn't. Sabemos que es he is or he isn't. Por lo tanto, su pasado es he were or he weren't. He, I'm sorry, he was or he wasn't. I'm sorry, me confundí. Um, excellent, Nubia. Now let's see number 13, Rita. I wasn't see the movie last weekend. Remember, si estamos usando, yes, that is correct. Como estamos usando un verbo normal, no es un adjective, sino que es un verbo sí, entonces usamos did o didn't. Yeah. Y como nos está indicando que es negativo, entonces diríamos did, right? Excellent. I didn't see the movie last weekend. Pero, ojo, muy importante, es una pregunta. Entonces hay un segundo error. 
cómo, tendría, cómo tendríamos que reordenar la oración. Ay. Didn't I see the movies last week? That is correct. Didn't I see the movie last week? Excellent. Lo vamos a poner así. Por esto y por esto. Excellent. Let's continue. Let's review number 14. Sergio. Hello, Sergio, are you here? All right, no problem. Volvamos a comenzar entonces. Let's review number 14, Christian. Sorry, ah. I am here. No problem. Okay, Sergio, let's do number 14. Okay, el error creo que está en el verbo, do. ¿Cómo sería? What did you do last night? That is correct. Los tenemos que invertir, right? What did you do? That is correct. Siempre va primero el verbo que conjugamos. What did you do last night? Perfect. Ahí sí, volvamos a comenzar. Let's review number 15, Christian. Uh, quiero ver. Uh, where they has a good time at the party? Mm, why? Voy a, le voy a dar una pista. El did está bien. Ese no es el error. Did they. El verbo. El verbo. Have. Have. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. Porque ya conjugamos did, right? Yes. Ya estamos usando did. Entonces el siguiente normal. verbo va normal. That is correct. Excellent. Did they have a good time at the party? ¿Y por qué no usaríamos where? Porque have es un verbo, right? Excellent. And let's finish the exercise with number 16, Marlene. Oh, the, the, oh no, sería, were you in class yesterday? That is correct. Excellent. Were you in class yesterday? ¿Por qué where? Porque nos está diciendo, no hay un adjective, pero nos está diciendo estabas. You were. Where are you? Stella? Were you in class yesterday? Excellent. Vamos a usar was where. ¿Por qué? Porque es el verb to be, el ser o estar, right? Si hablamos de estar en un lugar o de ser algo. Por eso ser para adjetivo y estar de estar en un lugar, right? O estar triste. Excellent, Excellent guys. Any questions about this exercise? Sí. No me queda claro cuándo vamos a usar did y cuándo no. Es que falté ayer, perdón. Ah, ok, 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 ok. No problem. Ok. Hagamos un review nuevamente. No problem. No sabía. Hagamos un review. Vamos a usar siempre. Was aware es más. Vamos a poner una whiteboard. Ok. Ok, let's put up a whiteboard. Y esto nos va a servir de recap a todos. So, vamos a usar was o where. Vamos a poner como tema general simple past. Right? Con el simple past, we can use was, where, and did. Right? We can use this three. Now. <coughs> We have two categories, was and where, and did, que se usan de manera para cosas distintas. Sabemos 
que was lo vamos a usar para los pronouns I, he, she, and it was. And the rest, they, we, you, were. Right? Entonces podríamos decir, yo les recomiendo que no se lo aprendan así, pero podríamos decir que viene siendo que es el pasado. Entonces, was, he was, I was, solo que por eso no se los recomiendo, porque I am, right? Es la única excepción. Entonces, pongámoslo así. Pero para los demás, sí. He is, he was. She is, she was. It is, it was. Y para los eh, otros, que el pasado de are vendría a ser where. Entonces, they are, they were, we are. We wear, uh, you are, you wear. All right, that is rule number two. In number three, we are going to use was or where for one. Being, okay, somewhere or something. Ya vamos a explicarlos bien. O, number two, for adjectives. Que también es ser algo, right? O sentir algo. So, vamos a poner un ejemplo. Number one, being somewhere o being something. ¿Por qué? Porque recordemos que el verb to be, que al final es este, solo que en pasado, es ser o estar. Entonces, estar en algún lugar, por ejemplo... Ejemplo número uno podría ser, I was at the park. Yo estaba allí, right? Ese es el verbo, estar. Entonces, I was there, right? Yo estaba allí. Ejemplo number two. Yo estaba de ser triste. I was sad. Right? Y sad también es un adjective, pero para ponerles el ejemplo de ser o estar. Right? O, vaya, otro. Uh, I was sad, I was rich, I was um, busy. Right? Uy, be. Y el ejemplo que veíamos en los exercises con adjectives, así como en el point B, I was busy, be, they were tired, uh, see, uh, she was rich, etc. Ahora con did lo usamos para los verbs. ¿Con qué pronouns vamos a usar did? Con todos, todos los pronouns, all pronouns. I did, you did, he did, she did, they did, we did, and it did. All pronouns. For the same. Ah, y nos faltó poner aquí que sus negativos son wasn't, que claro, esto es was not, y weren't. Right? Esto es where not. Sus negativos. Igualmente didn't. Tenemos did. Y su negative form es didn't. Que es did not. Point number three. Las preguntas en el simple past las vamos a comenzar siempre con did. Con verbs, right? Obviamente, si entra dentro de estas categorías, es were you there? Estabas allí. Siempre las comenzamos con el auxiliar. Did, was, or were. Were you there? Or did you do that? Veamos, tomemos esta pregunta de ejemplo. When making questions. Did you mm, do your homework? Right? Siempre que ya colocamos did, 
el siguiente verbo va en infinitivo. Did you cook dinner? El siguiente verbo va en infinitivo o en presente. Va normal, por decirlo así. Did you play soccer? El siguiente verbo va en infinitivo. Right? Las preguntas siempre las vamos a hacer con did, no las vamos a hacer con didn't. No es que sea un error, pero se escucha rude, se escucha pesado. Lo vamos a ocupar did cuando son todos los demás verbos, right? For the rest of verbs. Que no sean the verb to be. Did you do? Did you cook? Um, did you clean? Etc. En una oración normal. I didn't clean the house. En una oración positiva, en el pasado, no es necesario que, podamos, que pongamos did. I did mm, I did brush my teeth. Right? Lo podemos decir para como reafirmar. I did brush my teeth. Sí, está bien. Pero podríamos simplemente decir, I brushed my teeth. Right? Para lo que sí vamos a usar el did es cuando yo diga que yo hice algo. I did mm, the laundry. Lave la ropa, right? Hice la lavandería. I did the laundry. Que no lleve un verbo como tal, sino que usamos el verbo did como pasado viene a ser lo mismo, right? Y así sería. No sé si ahora se comprende más cuando vamos a usar was, where, y cuando vamos a usar did. Yes, thank you. Excellent. Any other questions, guys? Nope. Estamos bien. No, teacher. Excellent. Cool. So, guys, el día de hoy vamos a terminar con el content de la platform, which for that, let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Primero que nada, tenemos a series of vocabulary. We have vocabulary about school, school activities, school uh, words, things that you may use in a general conversation about school. And not only school like for kids, but we also have words like college um, and anything about that, right? So let's review. Vamos a leer some of these words. Hay algunas de, hay alguna de estas palabras que ustedes nunca hayan escuchado o no conozcan, guys? Or that you would like to know? O las conocemos todas. Junior high. Ok, junior high. Excellent. Vamos a hacer el review de eso, all right? ¿Saben ustedes cuál es la diferencia entre el elementary school, junior high, and no tenemos high school, pero vamos así. En Estados Unidos, el orden de la educación va kinder, right, kindergarten. Then you go to elementary school. Then you go to middle school. Then you go to junior high. And then you go to high school. 
en algunos lugares no van a junior high, sino que pasan middle school, lo juntan en uno solo y solo es middle school y de ahí high school. Um, y de ahí uno va a college and then si uno quiere puede ir a la university. El college, básicamente los college son como lo que nosotros conocemos como universidades, pero son puros técnicos, carreras de 3, 4 años, que son como realmente las carreras como nosotros las conocemos aquí. Y de ahí a la university uno puede ir a sacar um, a bachelor's degree or master's or anything like that, right? En college uno también puede sacar algunos bachelor's o majors. So, ese es el orden. Entonces, digamos que el elementary sería como um, el primaria, right? De ahí middle school van, um, me parece que es de los 12 o 11. No, como es de los 10. Middle school, yeah. Desde los 10 hasta los 13, a los 14 se va junior high. And then when you're 15, uh, high school hasta los 18. And then you go up to college, right? Esa es la diferencia. Son como diferentes niveles de educación, right? Ya como tercer ciclo, segundo ciclo, así como lo conocemos aquí. Okay, thanks. Excellent. What else, guys? All right. We also have the playground, right? A playground. Alguien sabe cuál es el playground? What's the playground, guys? This one. Ah, no, que ya las conocían todas, pues. Es un de recreo. Ajá, es como un área de juegos. Yes, that's correct. The area where the kids play, right? They play in the playground. Excellent. Now, we have some... Uh... Oh, my God. Mm. Se me dio la palabra. Oh, my God, what's going on? ¿Qué me pasa? Oh, my God. ¿Qué me pasa? ¿Qué me pasa? Oh, my God. Se me ha ido la palabra. Se lo juro que se me ha ido la palabra. We have some... Es que no son topics. Oh, my God. Pero science, math, language, history. Todos esos son um, las materias, right? That you review in school. Oh, my God, guys. No nos podemos quedar así. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh? Sub subject. Subject. That is correct. But we have subject, pero es que hay otra palabra. No es signature. Recuerden que signature es firma, right? Assignment es trabajos. Ah, there is another word. No nos podemos quedar así, guys. Let's go to Merriam Webster. This is El Mejor Diccionario, guys. Mary, let's go to Merriam-Webster. Let's see, mathematics, for example. Tal vez así lo encontramos. Mm -mm, the science of number and operations, a branch of operations. Mm -mm. Sí, creo que es subject. No, pero es que no es subject. Ok, guys, give me one second porque no nos podemos quedar así. Mm -mm, no es posible. No, inaceptable. Um, let's see. Let's review, guys. Ok, let's see. Mm -mm. Mm 
oh my god it's gonna subject bueno puede ser una no ay, bueno dejamos con subjects as for right now pero there's another word que se los voy a mandar más tarde por WhatsApp porque no es posible que nos quedemos así. Pero bueno, subjects for right now. Um, different subjects, right? Science, math, language, history. Um, what else? Music. Some schools teach music. You have sometimes biology. Si ya empezamos con materias específicas, biology. Um, physics, chemistry, right? Todos esos son classes or subjects, right? And then we have places, like, like the classroom. What's the classroom? The area where you have classes, right? Les recomiendo que hagan mucho eso. En lugar de decir classroom, área de clases, o salón de clases, digamos classroom. Okay, the classroom is the place where you have the class, right? Um, what's the gym? That's the place where you have your physical education class or where you do sports or where you work out, right? What do you learn in history or what's history? The class where you learn about countries and history and geography, right? And what is the lunchroom, guys? ¿Cuál es el lunchroom? Ajá, ustedes dijeron que ya los conocían todos. ¿Qué pasó? El comedor o el área de comida. Yes, that is correct. The place where you eat, right? Lunchroom. Perfect. Um, and yeah, guys, that is the vocabulary about schools. We have many other things words, right? We have desks. ¿Saben cuáles son los desks? That is correct. Yes, excellent. Eh, los escritorios o los pupitres, right? And my desk. Uh, we have books, we have assignments, so las tareas, right? Assignments, homework, We have, what else, guys? ¿Qué otra palabra le relacionan ustedes con school? Que me la puedan decir. Blackboard. Blackboard. Whiteboard. An eraser, excellent. What else? Pencil. Pencil, okay. Chairs. Chairs. Okay. Rulers. Rulers. Excellent. We also have the bell, right? When the bell sounds, that means that the class is over. Have the bell. Notebooks. Notebooks. Perfect. What else? Computer. Computer. We also have classes, right? We have um, backpack, backpack. I'm sorry, mochila. Oh, backpack, yes, backpack. backpack. Excellent, yes, that is correct. We have projects, school projects. We have the school bus. Aquí no mucho, más los microbuses, right? But school bus. It's better. Pen, it's better. Pencil, pencil case. Pencil case, yes. The lunch box. La lanchera. The lunch box. Map. Colors. Colors. Crayons. Map. Crayons. Crayons, crayons, sharpener. Uh huh. What else? Paper, paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Pen. Pen. Calculator. Calculator. Excellent. Los niños, allá, el colegio, le dice calc. <laughs> the calculator and the calc. Excellent, guys. So, yeah. Clock. Oh, the clock. Yes, that's very good. The clock. And we have a lot of words that we could go off with, right? We have uniforms. Algunos, algunas escuelas también usan uniformes allá. No las públicas, right? But the private schools do use uniforms. And yeah, guys, we have a lot of vocabulary about that. So yes, as you can see, uh, well, those of you who have children or maybe nephews or nieces, you can see their work and you can try to know the words in your head. Si tienen sobrinos, sobrinas, o si tienen hijos, pueden ver lo que ellos estén, el material que estén ocupando e intentar saber cómo decirlo, cómo lo dirían ustedes en inglés. So you can use it also, si están sacando algún master, o si están sacando una carrera, you can do that as well. We can uh, review some vocabulary about universities as well. We have the university campus, we have the university um, subjects, etc. Right? Yeah. Any questions, guys, about the vocabulary? Nope. No, teacher. Excellent. All right. In that case, vamos a pasar a la última parte, which is a reading. Es más, aquí lo vamos a abrir. And remember, guys, that tomorrow, lo voy a cerrar porque si no, no me va a cargar. Okay. Remember, guys, that tomorrow, we are going to be doing the review of the final exam. Ya mañana sí vamos a hacer el review de nuestro final test, which is going to be very interesting. We're going to have Okay, let give me one moment porque me está quitar esto. Okay, there we go. We're going to have um, six sections as usual for the final exam, pero ya lo vamos a ver mañana con más tiempo. El día de hoy vamos a finalizar nuestra platform with a reading. For some reason, this reading is about Ricky Martin. I don't know why, but it is. So, yeah, we are eight people right now. This is vamos. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. This one's long, so seven paragraphs. Okay, no problem. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, lo vamos a hacer así. Entonces, vamos a ir leyendo hasta cierta parte cada uno. So can I please have Nubia start reading from here until... Sí, todo este par, todo este par. Okay, teacher. Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, on December 24, 1971. He was always a performer as a child. He appeared in television commercials and studied singing. Excellent, Nubia. Thank you very much. Recordemos que nuestros reading exercises nos ayudan para nuestra pronunciation. Entonces vamos a ir haciendo algunos call-outs. Nuestro primer call-out is the pronunciation of child. Child, niño, right? As a child. Desde niño. Recordemos el, plural, el plural de child son children. Children. Right? So you cannot have one, uh, no, y children's no existe. This word no existe. Bueno, o sea, sí, pero digamos que 
there are many children. Ese sería lo correcto. No many children. Porque children just in plural. Right? Thank you, teacher. Excellent. Y the pronunciation of this word. Vamos. Appeared. Appeared. Apareció. Appeared in television commercials. Excellent. Continuemos, please. Let's see. Continuemos. Ale. Desde, sí, desde Pablo. Okay. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band Menudo. He worked hard with them and he became very well known. But he left the growth the grow after five years. Okay. That is correct. But he left the group after five years. Group. Ricky Martin estaba en menudo. He left the group. Excellent. Group. Perfect. Ahora, let's continue. Sergio, since here, hasta aquí, hasta opera. Okay. Martin moved to New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated. So he moved to Mexico City and got a, a part on a Mexican soap opera. Excellent, Sergio. Thank you very much. Vamos a hacer nuestro call out con this verb. Recordemos que para el pasado tenemos tres pronunciaciones diferentes. We have the T sound, the D sound, and the ED sound. Moved es uno de esos verbos que tienen una terminación en D sound. Entonces solo decimos moved. No pronunciamos la E. So moved. He moved to New York and he moved to Mexico City. Excellent. Y estamos frustrados, so he was very frustrated. Frustrated. En esta sí suena la E. Excellent. Now, let's continue reading. Let's see. Let's continue reading Rita. The rest of the paragraph. Let's see. Soon afterward, he recorded two Spanish language albums. After this success, he moved back to the U.S. Excellent, Rita. Thank you very much. Remember, guys, la pronunciación para este verb, moved. No pronunciamos la E, sino solo moved. Excellent. Now let's continue reading. Let's see, let's continue reading Christian, this paragraph. Back in the United States, he appeared on an American soap opera and in the Broadway show, The Mr. Loveless. Then he made his first English language album. Excellent, Christian. Thank you very much. No call outs there. Awesome. Let's go ahead and read this one, Jennifer. That album was called Ricky Martin. His biggest hit, Living La Vida Loca, was on that album. Excellent, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Same as with moved, the verb called, no pronunciamos la e, y solo diríamos called. Excellent. Y terminemos el reading, please. Um, let's, see. let's finish the reading, Marlene. Now he is famous around the world, but he still works hard and he still loves singing. Has he said to a reporter for the newspaper USA Today, I want to do um, this famous. I don't know. I want to do this forever. This forever. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Marlon. No call out spare. Excellent work, guys. All right. Are there any words that you don't know, guys, in this reading? Alguna palabra que no conozcamos? Or is everything clear? No question. All right. So, hagamos un rapid reading de este, de este reading. Para que demos eh, claro son cualquier pronunciation. Diríamos. Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico on December 24th, 1971. He, always, uh, he was always a performer. As a child, he appeared in television commercials and started singing. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band Menudo. He worked hard with them and he became very well known, but he left the group after five years. Martin moved to a New York, uh, moved to New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated, so he moved to Mexico City and got a part in a Mexican soap opera. Soon afterward, he recorded two Spanish language albums. After this, uh, after the success, he moved back to the U.S. Back in the U.S., he appeared in an American soap opera and in the Broadway show Les, Mis Les Miserables. Yeah. Then he made his first English language album. That album was called Ricky Martin. His biggest hit, Living La Vida Loca, was on that album. Now, he's famous around the world, but he still works hard and he still loves singing. As he said to a reporter for the newspaper USA Today, I want to do this forever. All right, guys. Y con eso estaríamos terminando nuestra clase de hoy. Tomorrow, we are going to be doing the review of the final test. All right, guys? So don't miss tomorrow's class, which will be our last class for this module. So exciting, guys. All right? Okay. See you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. See you. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.